Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The lamb wasn't such a little lamb any longer. It was nearly now a full-grown sheep. It had learned the ways of the shepherd and had those ways reinforced by the flock around it. But now the lamb was becoming a mature sheep, and it would be counted on to help the flock, to help train up the next generation of lambs, and to reinforce the ways of the good shepherd. But the lamb wondered, are there other shepherds? Maybe, maybe there are other shepherds who are better shepherds. Sometimes the, the shepherd made the flock go where they didn't really want to go. Might there be other shepherds who would make life easier? So the lamb began to ask around. And some of the other lambs heard the conversation, and they, they said that they have heard of other shepherds, and they were interested in exploring this as well. But an older, battle-scarred sheep overheard the conversation. This old sheep looked a bit ragged and worn, but there was wisdom in its voice. There are other shepherds, he said. When I was young like you, I had a conversation much like the one you are having now. My friends and I didn't like being directed by the good shepherd. He made us cross the water, even when the water was cold. He made us remain in a pasture to eat when it looked to us like there were greener pastures off in the distance. He did things and led us to do things that we didn't like, didn't understand, and didn't want to do. So we got together and we said, let's go in search of a new shepherd. We'll find one who will lead us where we want to go and will do what we want to be done. And so one night, while it was dark, we snuck away. After traveling through the night, we came upon a group of sheep. Now these sheep looked happy. They were quite young, like us. They welcomed us and they brought us to their shepherd. The shepherd smiled at us and looked quite pleased. He was happy to make us part of his flock. We thought we had found a better shepherd. But then we started to recognize that something wasn't quite right. There weren't any older sheep. So we asked the others, where are the older sheep? Older sheep? I'm not sure what you mean, they replied. About this time, the good shepherd arrived. He had clearly been searching for us all night, tracking us through the night. He looked concerned, but not angry. When he spotted us, he rejoiced, but the other shepherd protested. They belong to me now. The good shepherd reached into his pouch with his scarred hands and brought out several gold coins. With those coins, he bought us back. That day, the good shepherd brought us back to the flock my grandfather was very upset. How could you have gone away to a different shepherd, he asked. Because our shepherd makes us do things we don't like. My grandfather looked sternly at me. It's very fortunate that the good shepherd found you in time. That other shepherd, he doesn't protect his flock. He eats them. Didn't you notice there weren't any older sheep there? It's because he doesn't provide for them. He consumes them. This was shocking to me, I, uh, said the sheep, the old sheep. I hadn't considered that another shepherd might do such a thing. But my grandfather wasn't yet done. He continued, and yes, the good shepherd sometimes leads us to things we don't enjoy or don't want to do, but it's always for our good. It's always because he knows better than we do. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter, Christ the Good Shepherd Sunday, we get to rejoice in the reality that Christ is our Good Shepherd. We get to hear those wonderful words of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. We get to sing these beautiful hymns about Jesus being our shepherd. And yet, and yet there are so many other voices trying to get our attention, trying to get us to follow them, trying to get us to leave the good shepherd behind. There are other shepherds, 
seeking to have us follow them. See, Satan not only will appear as a wolf in sheep's clothing, Satan will also appear as a wolf in shepherd's clothing, appearing to be a shepherd, appearing to lead, but ultimately leading only away from the good shepherd. The false shepherds call out, Christianity is holding you back. The church doesn't want you to enjoy life. Christianity is out of date. The Bible's irrelevant. You're a fool if you believe that the Bible contains truth. Oh, by the way, here's a brand new truth, which just so happens to fit exactly with what you would like to hear. Ha, huh, how about that? And so we're tempted, aren't we? We're tempted to doubt the Good Shepherd. We're tempted to believe that Jesus doesn't really have our best, best interests in mind. The Christian life, that's just a lot of stuff that we're told we've got to do. We're tempted to believe that true freedom, true freedom would be found in leaving Jesus. We're tempted to leave the Good Shepherd like the sheep in our story in search of a new shepherd who will do things as we would like done. But just as likely, we don't even go looking for a shepherd. Just as likely, we think, you know, I don't, I don't actually need anybody overseeing me. I don't need a shepherd. I don't need a flock. I don't need a commitment to any body of believers. I don't need anybody overseeing me. I can go do my own thing. I can make the decisions that are best for me. I can do what I think best, and I can defend myself. And at that point, you are like an arrogant lamb, thinking you need no shepherd to protect you, no other sheep around you to help you, and you are on your way to destruction. Jesus is the good shepherd. But what makes him so good? What does he say? I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life the sheep. John expands on that in, in our epistle. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. This is one of the really, truly beautiful things about Holy Week. We just had that a few weeks back, right? What happens during Holy Week? We see Jesus ride into Jerusalem to the praises of the people. We see Jesus arrested, beaten, crucified, and dead. And some people want to go, see, he didn't have the power. He was taken by force. Uh, this was not what he had envisioned would happen. And it was this political power in place that he couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus could have called legions of angels if he wanted to. Jesus rides into Jerusalem and he suffers and he lays down his life on the cross not because anybody could force him to do that but because he willingly lays down his life for us he's paying the price for the sins that i've committed and you've committed paying them in full so that they are done with nothing held him to that cross but his love for you for this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. In our story about the, the, uh, the lamb learning from the old sheep, the good shepherd redeemed the sheep with gold coins. Well, First Peter tells us, and Luther's explanation of the second article of the Apostles' Creed reminds us, Jesus did not buy us back with gold coins. He redeemed us. That is, he bought us back, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and innocent suffering and death. For what purpose? So he could just own us. No, so that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Jesus redeems us because he wants better for us. He wants life for us. In Jesus, we do not have a shepherd who drives us to do things simply because he feels like it, or a shepherd who does what's going to be inconvenient for us, but quite convenient for him. He does the exact opposite, doesn't he? 
he lays down his life because we made it really difficult. And he does it for us out of love. Now, as the Good Shepherd, sometimes he leads us, he always leads us in ways that are best, but he sometimes leads us through times that are really, really hard. But even during those times, he never leaves us. The one who laid down his life for you, he's risen, right? That's what we celebrated on Easter. He is risen. He's conquered sin, conquered death, conquered the devil, and he has power over all things. And here he is, standing right next to you, protecting you, guiding you, leading you, and there is literally nothing that you need to fear because the one who has power over death He's claimed you as his own. Now, today is Confirmation Day. Confirmands have learned a lot of things. We've talked about law and gospel. We've talked about uh, the, who Jesus is. We've talked about how, in the means of grace, the Word of God, in absolution, in baptism, in the Lord's Supper, Jesus comes to us. He delivers all of that saving work he accomplished on the cross. We've co covered loads of information about the Bible. But the goal of confirmation is not just information download. It's not just, well, now I know a lot of stuff. But it's that they know Jesus. That they know the voice of the Good Shepherd. That they walk with him. That this continues that growth in faith. That walk with the Lord that will never end end, that they learn that true freedom comes only under the care of the Good Shepherd. The one who laid down his life to redeem us from sin, death, and the devil now watches over us. He protects us, guides us, leads us by his word. Literally, every time you listen to the Bible, read the Bible, Jesus is speaking to you. Indeed, he laid down his life. And he took it up again. He is risen. And he now watches over you, protects you, guides you in all things. At the beginning of the service, we sang uh, a children's hymn, right? I am Jesus, little lamb. Ever glad at heart I am. For my shepherd gently guides me, knows my needs and well provides me, loves me every day the same, even calls me by my name. You go, oh, that's, that's cute. Right? That's a good one for little kids to sing. You know, it's a good one for big kids to sing and grown up kids to sing and people who are 90 plus years old to sing because it's true for all of us. We are sheep of the Good Shepherd. We are lambs of Jesus. We are children of God. And because of that, we don't have anything to fear. We can sing this wonderful children's hymn with children's simplicity because. We have that kind of faith that says, all right, Jesus has got it. He's got me. I've got nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. There is peace, freedom, and joy in knowing Jesus as our good shepherd because our good shepherd laid down his life for us. He protects us still, and he will shepherd us through this life and into eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.